What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 21 of the Go Language tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is the panic and recover functions in Golang. In the previous tutorial, we talked about the defer statement, which um, basically uh, defers the running of a function until the end of the surrounding function is met. Either that's the function's done, or if the function does happen to error panic out, uh, the deferred statements will run. <clears throat> so we're talking about panic and recover now because one, panic is not just something that happens on its own and you can actually initiate a panic yourself if certain conditions are the case. Uh, but then if you do panic, naturally the program will just stop running. And generally we'd like that often to not be the case that the program stops. We'd like some way to recover. And that's what the recover function is for. So, um, and generally the recover function you're probably gonna put inside of one of the deferred functions. So let's kinda see how all this works. So in the previous tutorial, this is the code that we, we finished with, and I know all of you guys that were following along were like, but Harrison, what if I was equal to two? Obviously, that's a big deal. So if I is equal to two, we obviously need to throw an error, right? So we're gonna panic. And of course we're gonna panic and we're just gonna pass, uh, oh dear, A2. So this, you have to pass something. And what we're gonna pass is just the string message basically that just says, ah, we got a two. Okay, so, um, so we can actually save this. And for now, let's just run and see what this looks like. Uh oh, what did I do? Um, this is not the, the, the is issue that I wanted to see, I'm pretty sure, right non-declaration oh we know <laughs> come on man if i is equal to two right so if i is equal to two uh which we hit really we're gonna hit it twice but we first hit it over here we panic oh dear a two um and then everything just falls apart at this point <laughs> uh which is obviously not exactly what we wanted so now what we want to do is we want to be able to recover um we want to be able to recover from this this panic so let's say uh instead let's create a new function so we're going to do func so just for the record you can write <clears throat> like functions in line so you could defer a function right here but i don't really like doing that so i'm going to create a new function um and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna call this function cleanup. And inside of cleanup, the first thing that we're gonna ask is if r colon equals recover. So here, we're, we're just assigning a value to r. We could do it up before this, but we can also do it in line with the if, uh, the if statement. So if, a, if r, does not equal nil. So when we ask to recover, if there's not been any sort of panic situation, it's gonna return nil, so nothing. Um, but if it doesn't, if, it, if it's not nil, then we wanna recover the situation. So we're gonna do format.println, and the recovery that we're gonna do is we're just going to say uh, recovered in cleanup function basically and then we also want to know whatever r is r is going to be the panic in this case it's just going to be odira2 uh, but you could of course you could panic all kinds of things this is just a really simple example so that's our cleanup so we could also defer cleanup and throw that in there as well so let's go ahead and uh, yeah, save that, come over here, and then now let's run that. And as you can see, what happens is we're able to actually, you know, it says, hey, we recovered in the cleanup function, and then this is what the actual error was, odira2. And in fact, <clears throat> I kinda wanna do this just to make it a little more clear what's going on. Oops, <clears throat> there we go. All right. Um, See if we can get that. There we go. Uh, okay, so that's how we can do recover. And also, you know, obviously we're stacking these defer statements. So again, cleanup is actually running before wait group dot done runs. Now, in this case, I think we should probably add wait group dot done 
here in the cleanup. It seems to make the most sense to me. You can stack to first. It's not really anything that is necessarily going to be frowned upon. Um, I just think it makes a little bit of sense to throw it in the, in the cleanup like that. So then we can save that. And we should see that everything runs the same. Um, you also could, in theory, have defer inside here. Okay, we could still do that. Um, probably WG done, we're, we're gonna be in trouble if this doesn't run. Um, and But to be honest with you, I haven't spent enough time with Go to know whether or not it would be totally safe to not defer seems like uh or or what kind of repercussions we could face if we throw in a defer there so if you know the answer uh whether or not it's a bad idea to to do defer weight group done uh let me know i feel like if we do it this way we defer and then we also defer this i'm not really sure there's any negative benefit here or, or negative impact uh negative benefit <laughs> anyway i'm not really sure there's any sort of negative impact by doing it this way and we we really need to make sure we say we're done to the weight group. So I kind of feel like it's probably best if you pass a defer weight group done uh, either here or you could do it in this function. It just looks a little cleaner to me to say, hey, let's do it in the cleanup. <coughs> Mostly because I think if you stack the defers, it, it can make it kind of challenging to read uh, because defers, first of all, they, they happen generally in the, in the beginning of a function, but then they don't actually do anything until the end. And then, but the, also the stacked uh, defers go in reverse order, so it can be kind of confusing. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, if, if you have any uh, suggestion on what's the cleaner way to do things, uh, go ahead and let me know. Uh, also, I just happened to catch this. Some people are complaining or were complaining. Um, again, you can always run go format and you can get all the fixes to, to your silly code. Um, but yeah, I'll try to fix it as I see mistakes, but feel free to point them out too. Anyway, that's it for now. That is defer, panic, recover, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, in the next tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to get back to concurrency. Um, <clears throat> because remember, our you know what we're trying to work on is, is apply this to our web app. And we can obviously use GoRoutines with our web app. But we need one more thing, right? Like the GoRoutines, they were going off and running and doing their own kind of thing. Um, but what we need is go routines that are going to return values and, in, and, and somehow continue the concurrency without any sort of overwriting and corruption going on. Um, so the way that we're going to do that is by using channels. So channels are ways to send and receive values with go routines. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below or improvements. Uh, otherwise I'll see you in the next tutorial.